Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. My name is Hamid Slimi and I'm your host for this show. In Faith of Life uh, shows, we would like to focus on matters of life and faith. And one of the topics is economy, global crisis, and what we hear today in the news. Every man in the street, every uh, discussion you hear these days must touch on the issue of economy, jobs, and of course, uh, different uh, concerns, housing, because people's lives are very important. And what matters the most is uh, to be secure and happy and safe. These necessities, Islam, takes them in consideration and considers them as priorities. So one's religion, one's uh, mental life, one's uh, prosperity, family, society, and property, all these things uh, make up the uh, subjects of the law in Islam. Islam has a lot to offer to the world crisis today. With confidence I say this because experts today are uh, paying attention to what Islam says. We're talking about experts in the field of finances, in economy, experts in politics, they are saying why shouldn't we look at this model which actually uh, shows these days that uh, the investment which is done with uh, um, uh, concern for all parties with honesty without hidden fees and hidden clauses with integrity will lead to prosperity and we've spoken about this in the show before but today I would like to focus on the global crisis to understand it so the simple person like me and yourself understand where what is the contribution that we can offer and what does Islam say some may say what does a religion have to say about economy well if we read the Old Testament the Torah or uh, the stories we read there and in the New Testament we'll find that the prophets did contribute to their societies they were actually social workers they were contributors to the welfare of the communities just look at the story of Prophet Joseph and how he saved Egypt from a global crisis my dear viewers we will enjoy listening to our guest today talking about these things and we will shed some light from an Islamic perspective. So we'll be back after these messages. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Islam is built on five pillars. From the Faith of Life Network comes a brand new eight DVD set on the five pillars of Islam. Filmed and produced at the highest studio quality, this comprehensive DVD series includes thorough yet easy to understand discussions on the testimony of faith, prayer in Islam, charity and almsgiving, fasting in Ramadan, and the pilgrimage to Mecca with a bonus DVD on good manners. Good for the young and old, new Muslims and simply anyone who would like to learn about the basics of Islam in a whole new way. Makes a perfect gift for family, friends and colleagues. To order your copy today, call now at one 201 3339 or visit us online at www.faithoflife.com. Welcome back. Uh, we've spoken in this show before about the world financial crisis, economy, the greed and different things and we shed some light from an Islamic perspective and some of our viewers actually were uh, sending me some questions and saying what would Islam have to, what does Islam have to do with finances and it's interesting these days we see in papers and even in recently in a communique in the Vatican talking about the Islamic financing and it seems to be a, a trendy thing these days that uh, financial experts educate themselves uh, in what we call Islamic financing or I, I would call personally finances in Islam with me to shed more light uh, prominent guest uh, brother Rehan Huda welcome to the show thank you it's good to be here Rehan is a, sen a former senior economist for the finance department for the federal government and also he is a world-renowned uh, financial consultant specifically uh, when he dedicated all his efforts and work for finances in Islam explaining and also uh, giving um, ideas and also starting many initiatives we're here to talk uh, Rehan more about uh, you know uh, some uh, some of the world crisis and finances mm -hmm. and how we can you know reflect from an Islamic perspective but before then mm. uh, tell us a little bit your uh, give us an insight on the world crisis what are really mm. the reasons for this crisis uh, that's a, that's a very good question and we'll probably need a several shows to go over all the different theories uh, but um, one of the things I've sort of learned uh, watching this crisis unfold um, is that um, th there seems to be uh, this sort of um, oversupply of credit uh, that was given into the market and this caused this sort of you know irrational exuberance uh, as, as one of the prominent economists has said and uh, and this has led 
to this crisis. This has actually led to a number of other crises. If you looked at what's happened with the Asian economies in 1997, 98, if you look what happened in South America, if you look what has happened globally, it seems a similar, uh, similar pattern of behavior. And uh, we were at a conference uh, in Harvard um, late last year, and um, we had a couple of prominent economists. One was uh, Robert Merton, who was uh, a Nobel Prize winning uh, economist. And we had Omar Chopra, who has won the King Faisal Prize in economics, uh, uh, given to the prominent uh, Islamic economists. Um, and uh, Omar Chopra said that if you analyze all the crises in depth, if you look at what are the root causes, it seems to be this oversupply of credit. Uh, you see ballooning real estate markets. Uh, you, you see a lot of greed and other factors playing in place. And then at the end, you see this collapse. And um, I think we're seeing that. Uh, this crisis is a little bit different. Um, I think you see a lot more inherent corruption. Um, and you see, um, uh, especially uh, in, in, in the US, uh, sort of a lack of confidence in, in the banking system, lack of confidence in financial institutions. Um, and, and the blame, I think, uh, is shared by, by a number of players in the industry. Now, um, what are the vulnerabilities of the financial system in general? Like, uh, it's it's so shaky. I mean, everyone we do have some some trust and faith in banks, yeah, okay. but all of a sudden it's so vulnerable. Mm. And in, in in the U.S., as you mentioned, many yeah. banks have declared bankruptcy. Yeah. No one w would have believed this, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. But yeah. what are these uh, you know weaknesses all of a sudden coming out? Yeah, there there's some structural deficiencies uh, in the system. Uh, one of the things that has ha that's happened developed over the past few years is you see the sort of uh, securitization market, this trading of debt, uh, where the banks traditionally used to hold on to the assets on their balance sheet, and now they were selling it off and packaging it in these uh, securitized products, and they would be packaged and sold again and again and again. So at the end of the day, the banks weren't really interested in hanging on to their customers, providing them service, uh, providing them you know, good rates for the long term. Uh, they were interested in making uh, you know, a quick dollar and getting rid of the asset and selling it out. Um, and these products were packaged and they were sold to the market, you know, um, and, and the investors thought they were as good as, you know, as gold, as, as, as government securities. Mm. And in fact, they weren't. And so, and, and these products were sold down the line. And so you would have investors in China, all over the world, <laughs> buying these type of investment products, thinking they were very secure. But at the end of the day, you had a person in the U.S. buying a house, which probably had inflated price. Uh, they couldn't afford it, really. Uh, they were given some teaser rates to get in quickly, but in the long term, the interest rates would rise and they wouldn't be able to afford it. And, and it seems that a number of people in the market actually knew that was going on. Uh, they knew in the future there will be this collapse, uh, but they were profiting in the short term. You agree with me that the government uh, should be involved? And now the U.S., for instance, mm -hmm. Obama administration, they are moving towards somehow a Canadian model where the government somehow is involved. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the Canadian model is, compared to others, is, 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 is a good model? Yeah, well, I think uh, the IMF, or one of the um, international institutions ranked the Canadian banking system, is the number one banking system in the world. Uh, very solid banks, well capitalized. Uh, we didn't take the type of risks the other uh, sort of jurisdictions has, have taken. Um, you know, the subprime mortgage, where people who normally would not get credit uh, were suddenly getting credit and being allowed to buy homes, and homes that had inflated prices. Um, so th we had some of that in Canada, but not a lot. And so I think a more conservative system, uh, a more value-based system uh, like we have in Canada, I think is a better one. The reason why I'm saying this is because you cannot trust private you know, uh, people or companies mm -hmm. with very sensitive issues such as health, uh, major finances, economy of the country, and uh, education. Right. And you notice that the uh, Obama administration, especially President Obama himself, mm -hmm. is trying to emphasize that the government should take ownership of these things because once neglected, the whole nation, you know, uh, suffers. Now, for our viewers, in a much, much simpler language, mm -hmm. okay, this is what happened in the last few months, and people are still perplexed, what is going on? Right. Can you put it in a very simple language? Well, um, in terms of the banking system, I mean, the government um, has sort of guaranteed some of the loans that the banks have put out. The government's provided them with excess liquidity, uh, basically cash if they need it. Uh, the government is targeting certain sectors, such as the auto sector, in order to bail them out to make them functional. Um, you, you're seeing a, a lot of government involvement um, in a number of different industries, which you would normally not have seen uh, in the past. And, and basically, since the private sort of uh, sector is not spending, uh, it, it's not investing as it should, the government is basically taking that role. And so what we see right now 
is uh, a huge amount of commitments from the government um, in infrastructure projects, in all type of government-sponsored initiatives, and we'll see over time how that pans out. Excellent. Let's stick around, uh, dear viewers. We will be back after these messages. We will talk more about finances from an Islamic perspective. Please remain seated. We'll be back. <laughs>